So I'm a uh, clinical pediatric neurologist, mm -hmm. so I see children um, with neurologic conditions, including epilepsy, and I'm also a research scientist. So, um, so my um, position combines the two, that I take care of patients and then I, can, I go back to the lab and do research on um, epilepsy and, um, the, and with the goal of trying to, in long term, improve the care of, of my patients. So the, this was actually a um, kind of a great example how kind of combining the, the clinical side of care with, with the research side can really come together. So um, kind of my experience in taking care of children with epilepsy, a lot of the um, kids, especially the infants with the most severe types of epilepsy were ones that had um, different types of um, brain abnormalities or brain malformations that we talk about. And um, these were, um, always kind of very mysterious that, that people didn't really understand how did these malformations happen you know what what was the cause was it uh, you know a, a virus an insult a, a genetic cause so um, I had been studying these types of malformations for many years and um, then a new investigator came into our institution who was a geneticist interested in, in the genetics of brain malformations and um, came um, up with a project to actually look for genetic mutations in the brain instead of just in the blood which had been the traditional view so that's kind of how it came together and, and it's, it's really been a kind of a fascinating um, journey over the past couple of years. Every day of doing research is a series of, of challenges um, and you know those go all the way from funding to, to equipment to you know working with um, patient samples adds a, another layer of complexity to it because you want to make sure that everything is done, you know, correctly and, and confidentially and, and, you know, that, that everything is um, kind of at the highest level when you're working with patient samples. Um, and I, you know, the reason I collected the samples in the beginning had nothing to do with identifying mosaic mutations in the brain. And so I, I think that the, um, you know, what I learned most from this and what I think is happening more and more in, in research is that collaborations and working across different disciplines, um, bringing together people with different interests and different techniques is, is what's really going to push the field forward. So I, I think the biggest one is the ability um, in genetics to identify um, mutations that exist at very low levels in tissue. So for traditional sequencing, that the type that's done, you know, when you order a gene test um, from a company, is is that they'll they can pick pick up mutations that are present. You know, if they're there in all the cells, it's pretty easy. But if you have a mutation that's only present in one in a hundred cells, there are very specialized techniques that that need to be used in order to identify that. And, and that's what really allowed this research to happen was um, the, the sequencing technologies that were being developed at University of Washington um, to pick up these very low level mutations is, is what really pushed this. You know, in, in particular, that when I'm working with infants that have this condition, that what's I think is really important is early on forming a partnership with the family and being very upfront with them about, you know, that this is going to be a journey, that it's not going to be easy, there are going to be setbacks, you know, that, but that there's always, you know, there's always hope and, you know, new things that, that we can investigate and, and try and that things are progressing rapidly on the research front that can then be translated to improving the care for their for their child, so I, I think that that's always been the most important thing for me is to kind of to form that that partnership with the families because it's it's not unfortunately it's not as simple as you know take this pill and everything will be better that it's it's a process. You know, obviously there's a, a lot that you can try in animal models that you would never you know test on on humans. Um, what we're running into is is actually um, kind of a beneficial situation in many ways that 
medications and treatments that we're identifying in the animal models um, are often treatments that are used in, um, in humans in other fields. So not for the treatment of epilepsy, but used, for example, for the treatment of cancer that may be able to be translated to epilepsy or for the treatment of you know, um, organ transplantation that can be translated to epilepsy. So that you, know, you, you kind of go into it with a lot of safety data that's been collected in, in these other fields that, that can really push things forward much more quickly than if it's a totally new, you know, medication that's never been tried before and that nobody knows what it what it's gonna do. So um, Avera Lemus is the um, kind of the model for that. Um, uh, it's been used a long time as an immunosuppressant in cancer. It inhibits the mTOR protein, which is part of this growth pathway. And um, it's been found initially in animal models and then translated to patients with a condition called tuberous sclerosis complex um, that often have seizures that you can actually use the same medication um, in treatment of patients with, with tuberous sclerosis. So that's, yeah, that's been one of the, the fastest moving things that I've seen in a while as far as the epilepsy field where you could identify something in the, in the laboratory and quickly translate it to, to patient care. So what uh, really the underlying goal of my research from the beginning has been to be able to um, tailor treatments for children with epilepsy. So to be able to better understand what's causing their seizures, what's causing their disease, and then to pick a treatment that specifically targets what their problem is. That what we're, you know, what we're kind of left with at this point is using medications that are mostly developed for treatment of adults with epilepsy that have different causes than the types of seizures that happen in kids. And it's, you know, everyone that has a seizure ends up with the same medication without considering what's actually causing the seizures. That's, so. that's really the goal of my research, um, and I think the goal of a lot of people's research is that we can move it to a, a situation kind of similar to how cancer is treated, where you say, okay, this is what's causing the cancer, this is the genetic mechanism underlying it here, this is the medication that'll, that'll fix the problem. So that's what we're working towards. <laughs>